Thank you, Father. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. We exalt you. We magnify you, O oh God. For ushering us into another day, into another moment in time. To reveal your glory, to reveal your splendor, to show forth your majesty, your beauty, your holiness, your sovereignty. Thank you, Father. We join the host of heaven this morning to hallow you, to honor you, to exalt you, to extol you, to worship you. In the beauty of, of your holiness this morning, I proclaim, Lord Sabbath, hold you worthy of praise. Our God, Emmanuel, the ever-present one, we lift you high this day. Have your praise, take your glory. Let honor, adoration be ascribed unto you. As we gather this day, O oh God, once again, at your footstool to hear, to listen, to gaze into the eternal realities of the unfolding nature of your presence. May we truly, truly worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you. I thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you for granting me once again, Lord, the privilege to be alive, to share life with everyone out there. May the things that will be flowing out of me, the river that will be flowing out of me, O oh God, bring life bring hope bring faith bring courage oh god let it bring clarity understanding as i listen to the things that you have been saying in the past few days it's amazing the lord we are privileged to be custodians of these things thank you father lord this is another day we hope to conclude this morning if you will I pray that as we once again empty ourselves and have a listen to what your spirit is saying, that once again you will show us things, you will reveal directions to us as you impress the realities of Sabbath upon our life, that we will journey in that understanding that our transition into you, O oh God, will be done without sweat. That our life and representation of life on earth will be one that is totally void of human strength. Yes. Because we have come via the cross. We have come to the day of the finish. You said it is finished. Those who finish are those who have entered into your rest. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. We exalt you, man, mighty God. We lift your name on high, King of glory. Worthy are you, Lamb of God. Yes, continue to speak to our heart. Continue to minister to us, O God, in the revelation of your truth, O God. Keep showing us, O God, the impressions of your heart. Let Christ once again this morning be formed in us. Let, let his nature be revealed in us. Let his truth, yes, expand, O oh God, in us. We bless you. We glorify you. Honor and glory to you, King of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm. Rabako sombregeada. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. 
Lehibra hasu bregede. Madabon de gali kalabas don de deba. We prepare our hearts. As Jotam prepared his way, we prepare our hearts. You engage with the heart of men. When the heart is right, the legs and the hands align. Speed, acceleration, velocity is what we see when the heart is right. Yes. He said, without, without the purity of heart, no one sees you. No one sees you. No one sees your way. No one sees your intentions, your desire, your counsel. And so, Father, we come this day, O oh God, yes, with a pure heart. Purify my heart this morning. Everyone joining us this morning, may their heart, O oh God, be purified. We come via, O oh God, yes. The purification, the sanctification, we come there, O oh God, this morning. Yes, Father. The purging, we come through, O oh God. The, refine, the refining furnace. Oh, yes, Father, we come via the fire this morning. That we may stand worthy, O oh God, before you and representing you to creation. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, that the things that you've been speaking to us in the past few days, Lord, have brought us to a new position Yes, Lord, of understanding the caliber of people that you desire to see in the earth. A people whose life, oh God, yes, have been harvested from the issues of life, from the challenges, yes, of life, from the fear and the doubts of life. You've brought them to the place of light, of sight, of wisdom, understanding. You've fed them. You've washed them. You've You've prepared them by clothing them, giving them a new sense of thinking and reason in a life that they can engage from a different order. Thank you, Spirit of God, that now our view is changing. Our understanding of the future is becoming clearer and crystal yes, clear that we are no longer confused. We're not afraid because we know that he who has ceased from his own work, yes, as enter into your rest as you cease from your walk and you enter the seventh day rest. We thank you, O oh God, that this work can be finished because indeed it is already finished. Thank you, Lord, that as you've called us and chosen us as the executors of your intentions in the earth, may we embrace this understanding and may we just go and represent as ambassadors. May we just go and represent as you send us back down the valley. May we come, O oh God. May we represent your will and purpose and desire. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. We thank you this morning. Habba Father, we love you. We appreciate you. Glory and praise to you. Thank you for the things that you're doing. Yes, the things that we cannot see. But yet there are activities taking place. <laughs> we, things that we cannot feel, we can't touch them. But yes, they are spiritual things. He says, it's the foolish that says in his heart, there is no God. Meaning that God is stoic. He cannot engage with the realities of human life. But you were moving. You've been moving from the beginning. <clears throat> As your spirit over upon the face of the deep. And your word, which is the instrument, yes, of your engagement. You spoke your word. Let there be light. And there was light. Ah. Father, this day we thank you that in the activity of this message, that change is occurring, uh, that in the proclamation of this word that will not return void, empty, that things are happening, you are rotting things in the hearts of men over the spheres of nations and cities, oh God. That this word is bringing change, hope. It's bringing life, it's bringing deliverance, oh God, to family. That wherever this word, oh God, will be accepted, wherever the, the, the men will open the door for this word to penetrate, to enter, oh God, that your will and counsel will be established in such a realm. We thank you. We honor you, oh God. That if this word is received mixed with faith, oh God, that you will cause courage to rise. In the heart of men, once again, to build that which looks broken and shattered. Thank you, Spirit of God. We bless you. We glorify you. 
We magnify your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is already established in heaven. Amen. I want to welcome you this morning. If you're joining us wherever you are joining from, I want to thank God for another beautiful, glorious day. This is an exciting day. This is a day of the Lord and the day of his majesty, the day of his glory, is a day of his power. The Bible says in the day of his power, in the day of the revelation of his power, there will be a willingness in the hearts of the people of God to engage. And so we thank God this morning that we are willing because he's revealing his power to us. His power, amen, is the manifestation of his presence where the word of the king is. There's power there. Hallelujah. <laughs> where the word of a king is, there's power there. All right. Power is not when where you only see the scepter. But where the word of God, amen, is expressed, where the authority of God, amen, is allowed. The Bible says the Lord is the spirit. The Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of God is given the liberty to do what, amen, it desire, there you see wonder, signs, miracles, deliverance. So if you open your heart this morning to what the spirit of God, amen, is saying through this, through this prophet, through this vessel, through this, you know, man called Isaiah, that things will begin to happen in your space. Yes, I've seen things happen in the life of people that don't find even me. Amen. That, you know, I, I, I'm speaking. I've seen things. I've seen God just move in the life of people. And that's what gives me a, a sense of, of hope and, and, you know, reverence to the things that heaven has committed into my hand particularly. That these words are not feebles. They are not just empty words. No. These words are filled with life. They are filled with hope. They are filled with faith. If you will open the gates of your heart and allow this word to penetrate, God will begin to do things in your life. You don't need to begin to examine and wonder what is he doing. No. You just open up. You just need to have faith, trust, and believe and see things begin to happen in your life. Yes. I speak under this authority. I'm a man of authority. I'm on the authority. I've come, not in my own name. I've come, amen, via the authority, via the name of him who sent me. I'm a sent one. And so I bring a message of a sent one. In the, far, far, in the past few days, we have been looking at concepts, amen, of what the Spirit of God, amen, brought us to and brought us into in 2020. And it's important that we do that because it's a year now that, you know, God brought Sabbath upon the earth and shut down the strength of men brought down the high and the mighty as much as he was using amen all kinds of instrument you know, to, to 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 do the things that he wants to do in the air because indeed whenever god wants to move god always need an instrument sometimes the instrument himself may be the devil himself lucifer himself <laughs> sometimes it may be maybe the people you know the people you appreciate you love the people that are very close to you but in most cases, there are people that you hate. There are people that are far from the values of your life, that are totally, you know, against what you believe, what you stand for. But God will use them as long as they are instruments. Amen. Everything that God creates, amen, are instruments in his hands. Just as the church, amen, the ecclesia is an instrument. But beyond the ecclesia, there are other instruments that God uses. God will use creation. God will use, you know, uh, uh, you know, people in politics, people in leadership. God will use even the world, amen, of uh, those who are in the business, you know, uh, Phil. God will use those in the finance world. God will use, you know, uh, uh, you know, the queens or, you know, the em em emperors and empires. He's, he's, he has, he, from, from generation to generation, amen, God has never, uh, you know, found himself in a point where he has no tools, to, you know, an instrument to use. He used Pharaoh. He said, for this purpose, I have raised you, Pharaoh. <laughs> Think about that. Amen. He used Nebuchadnezzar to show how glorious, how powerful his kingdom is when he sent him seven years sabbatical leave. Amen. You know, when Nebuchadnezzar came back, he proclaimed with his own mouth, there is no God like the God of heaven. He declared that God who, who sits and reigns over the affairs of men is his God. He bowed before him. This is, this is a king who thought, amen, it was all in all. 
God has always used nations and empires and kings. As much as amen, things may be happening in the human realm that are, you know, confusing and tough to, you know, very hard and tough to, to accept. Yes, but God was in charge. He's the one who sits upon the waters. He is still rule. His, his glory, hallelujah, is from one realm to another. He has not abdicated his place or position. Even when Adam abdicated his responsibility, hallelujah, he still came down and asked, Adam, where are you? I can still fix you. So let's understand, amen, that there is hope. Amidst all the confusions and the, you know, discouragement and the perplexity and the frustration and the lack and the need and the death, amen, and the loss that we have faced, let's, let's, let's akin to the voice of God and see him, hallelujah, as the sovereign one, amen, who is revealing his sovereignty over the affairs of men. God is not stoic. He's still speaking. Hallelujah. He's very much alive and he's, he's, he's proclaiming. He, he's seen the unfolding realities, amen, of his glory. His kingdom is coming near us. His kingdom is coming near, amen, the high and the mighty. Nations are feeling, the, amen, the power and the glory of his, of his presence. No matter, you know, what anybody say or done, at the end of the day, he defines the final say. His counsels are established. His will is established. His dominion, hallelujah, is established from everlasting to everlasting. Of the increase of his peace and reign, there shall be no end. Uh, you know, when you think of, you know, what fails us to really uh, to capture and to express who he is. And it's from that understanding that we live life. It's from that position of his dominion of his authority in fact that's what we proclaim when we say we're preaching the, the the gospel we're preaching the gospel of who he is the kingdom is a reflection of who god is the kingdom is not a realm it's not a sphere it's not some geographical you know you know place called heaven the kingdom is contained in him he is the kingdom <laughs> he is the kingdom friends he is the only one that the kingdom dwells in. He fills all things. Think about that. He fills all things. Everything consists in him. So when you begin to think about that, you better be careful how you define the throne of God. <laughs> how you define what the throne of God is. Because God's throne is not some seat that he sits on. Think about it. We need to find out what that means when we say the throne of God. When they say he sits in majesty, what does that mean? Because he sits over all. May the Father continue to reveal the realities of his intention, his demand. That's why the key to the days that we live in is lock in the revelation of Christ. The key to advancing, to representing, to carrying out whatever it is, God see whatever God has placed in you will be fulfilled. You can't, you can't, you can't try to carry out the things that heaven has not infused in you. So stop trying to make people do things that heaven has not impressed in their hearts. It's important we understand that because it's not going to be by might. That is what God is bringing to an end. The might of our intellect, the might, amen, of our knowledge, of our wisdom, the might of our ability. We want to do things. We want to carry out things. It's not going to be. God shut it down, amen. And, 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 and this new day that heaven has given to us, we have to model out what Ecclesia is and what the message of the Ecclesia, amen, should be in terms of the kingdom of God. Remember that the kingdom of God is a vast dimension. Uh, 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 there's a material that we have written that, you know, I had to re-edit again. And yesterday, I just kind of finished the material, dedicated the material to my daughter. <clears throat> hoping uh, in their generation, they will be able to step into some of this truth. Because we need to prepare, amen, for them. Prepare for posterity. 
I'm not just preaching for the people of my time and generation. I'm also, you know, bringing out resources. Many of the resources that we are bringing out are, are deliberate to prepare, amen, the groundwork for the future. They don't have to suffer and go through some of the things that we went through. So we have to prepare the way for them. That's that's the that's the beauty, amen, of, of a good father. The Bible says a good father lives inheritance for his children. These are the inheritance I'm living for my own children, amen. Yes. It's like inheritance that I'm leaving for my children. And I don't have some God knows what money stuck somewhere, you know, for them. No. These, these treasures that heaven has committed into my hands are the things that I'm preparing as an inheritance for them. When they, when they come into this, they will never lack. This inheritance will always be given. It it's, 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 will, will forever sustain them. Amen. So we brought out this material. I'm going to be releasing it hopefully today or tomorrow. And see how we, we define the kingdom. Because they need, to, they need to understand these things. As we are also you know, uh, uh, groping to understand. They must come into what the kingdom of God is. Because the days ahead of them are days of course of deception. It's a battle of truth. What is truth? How do we define life? How do we define success? How do we define, you know, you know, fulfillment? How do we define identity? How do we define, amen, you know, values? How do we, how do we, how do we define, amen, our own, even the idea of culture? How do we define all of this thing? Nationality, all this confusion. We need to look into the word of God and be able to bring, amen, answer and speak, give voice to many of these confusions, amen. And so, as the Lord continues to deal with us, we need that right spiritual framework of mind, amen, to do that. And that's why the Lord brought the, you know, the entire world, particularly the church, to a place, amen, of reset. We said it, amen, a few, 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 few times ago that the word reset was not coined by, you know, the, the globalists. Now they call it the great reset and all of that. No, ever before they begin to talk about, you know, the great reset, the very, the very first time God spoke to us, this is a reset. It's a nice word. It's a nice, you know, a, a phrase to, to capture what God is doing. But we know that that's what the devil does. Whenever God begins to move and begin to speak, amen, the devil copies it. And if you're not careful, and, and the reason he does that, all right, is for those, amen, who are not, you know, tracking with God to get confused. And then they follow his voice. The voice of the devil, in most cases, is louder than the voice of God. When God speaks, he speaks in a state of quietness and, and authority and sovereignty. So if you're not careful, if you're not listening, amen, you may just be listening to the, to the other thing that sounds like God, but it's not God. That's been the pattern of the devil. Check through the scripture. So we have to understand, amen, what the Lord is saying. And this material, amen, is about defining what the gospel of the kingdom is all about and i love the things that we talked about in that material and i hope somebody will find it a, a, a useful all right because we need to as the spirit of the lord continue to speak to us we need to be able to document this thing that's one of the grace god has given to me i i, I didn't cover this this is not something that i prayed for and say god no 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 with with my with my historic background, I, I I that's that's something that should not have happened. But God looked at me and said, "Well, I choose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise." And He placed, Amen, the spirit of a, of a scribe in me and said, "Okay, I need you to bring out these things. This that's my call. That's my ministry. We've been doing this for the past, you know, twenty five years. Just writing." Just, just, you know, I remember back in those days, it's just, you know, your, you know, your uh, 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 newsletter. Every week, we always bring out a word. Back in those days, we call it the reflector. Reflecting Christ. But we thank God. I mean, if something has been with you for 25 years plus, then you know that that thing is a gift, is a, is a grace, is a calling. You know, there are things that we love to do, all right, because we, we see it and we admire it in people and we tried it for, you know, one year, two years, three years, and after that, it dies off because that's not, that's not our default. I've, I've seen that. I've, I've preached on that several times. People like things. They covet it. They go after it, all right, and because they have the resource, they have the energy, they have the ability, they, you know, and after a while, it fades away. Then they find the goal, start looking for something else. No. When you allow God to show you what he has designed and ordained your life for, <laughs> you don't need to struggle again. Just focus on it and be the best in that area. I, I can tell you, I am one of the best in my field of assignment. 
I am one of the, he says boasting. Well, let me boast. Let me boast in the Lord. At least let me boast in one thing. All right. I boast in the Lord, but I also boast, amen, in the authority that God has given to me, amen, as a scribe, as a, as a priest scribe, amen. It's from there that my prophetic, uh, hallelujah, you know, voice began to, you know, you know, gain expressions in the earth. When, when, when it was challenging and difficult for people, amen, to, to invite us to their pulpit and speak. God says, I've given you an instrument. I've given you a platform. Use it. And a lot of people today are benefiting from this grace and, grace and gift. So we want to thank God for that. I, I, I mean, yes, there are days you season you feel tired. You feel even sometimes feel confused and disillusioned like God. Because of the challenges and the pressures of life. But then God remind you again of what a man has been invested. What has been placed in you. You cannot give up. There are people who need it. I mean, how, who does it that every morning you come and proclaim. And the word is fresh. The word is alive. I mean, that's why I tell you, I am the best listener. I, I just love to preach to myself. Sometimes when I'm preaching like this, you think I'm preaching to you? No, I'm preaching to myself. I go back and I listen. Yesterday night, you know, just, just about, you know, uh, uh, from few minutes to 12 midnight, I had to listen to the message we did in the morning. And I'm like, God, I hope somebody picked this because I'm picking something. Yes. And I think that's the reason why God can commit more into my life. Because I'm the, I don't see myself as a preacher. I see myself as a representative. I see myself, amen, as a conveyor, hallelujah, of the voice of God, of the heart of God, of the mind of God. And when I do that, even the word brings healing to my own life. I've listened to my own message bringing healing to my own life. It's amazing. Because the things of God, amen, is no respecter of man. God is no respecter of man. Our attitude to the things of God, amen, matters. And those are the things that we are speaking about. It is not how far, how, how good you are. It is not, amen, how, how well polished you are. Those things are good and needed. Yes, your presentation, all of that. Hey, but beyond the presentation, amen, you have to have a standing your attitude, your belief, your posture before the Lord, amen. The condition of your heart, your ability to hear, to know, amen. To be able to pick things. That's what makes God, amen, look at you and commit, amen, bigger things into your hands. And I think those are the things that, to me, matters to me. Because what, what did Jesus have, amen, in terms of human life that he came and changed the world he showed us amen how to change the world he showed us what it means amen to be a world changer he showed us amen how to come and transform atmosphere when he when he enters a place amen his presence his presentation his voice his words changes the atmosphere Either for good or for worse. You know what I mean by for worse? They, you either like him or hate him. But he brought something there. And that's what, I, that's what I've been tracking. I want to be like him. It's not about how you look. It's not about how you dress. Amen. It's not the, the big car. You, you know, the world system is about branding. It's about amen, making impression. Yes, in the spirit we make impressions. Hallelujah. When I come into a place, I want to make impression. Hallelujah. I want to make impression. I want, amen, the, the powers that be, the, the, the authority, the principality over that realm, over that region, amen, to know that I am in town. I want them to know. I want them to know. I want them to know that I am in town. There is no place that I go. When, when I step into that realm, into that region, it could even be a community. I want the powers that be. That somebody, a representative of heaven, a reflector of Christ, a man of God, hallelujah, has come to town. So Lord, let all the demons begin to begin to begin to shake in their boots. Come on, you see, I, I, we don't go amen, with AK, you know, forty-seven, whatever they call these big con guns. You see, men of God come to town, and you see men, men in blacks. You know, 
We come on assuming, but heaven is trembling. Heavens are trembling. Powers of darkness are trembling when we come to town. Hallelujah. Where we are right now, we are seated governing over the realm. Because that's our assignment. I know my place as an elder position at the gate. I know my place. So we thank God for these declarations and utterance. Yes, these are the oracles of the days heaven has brought us into. And when heaven gives us the voice to speak, we speak without holding back. And the day that says, or seasons that say, say nothing, be quiet. We are quiet. Regardless of what men may try to do to make us speak, we don't speak. Because amen, our, 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 our instruction comes from above. Because we are from above. So we thank God for what God, amen, is doing. What are we doing? We are creating, amen, a sense of the journey. <laughs> we are creating a sense, amen, of, of the journey. We are on a journey. And sometimes, amen, people get carried away. They get distracted. They, they get pulled away. It is my duty and calling. And I pray that God will continue to grant me, amen, that grace to daily, amen, keep you at breast, amen, with the transition, with, amen, the demand of God for your life. It is my prayer that every day, amen, that as long as I live, as long as I have breath, it is my responsibility to steer the heart of the believers, to steer, amen, the atmosphere, amen, to create, to release, to break the alabaster box, amen, to create that, that atmosphere where, amen, the, the, the perfume of the Lord, amen, reminds you of who is in the house. That's my calling. That's my, that's my prophetic, amen, mandate, amen. So we don't forget our inheritance. After a season, the Bible says that Jeremiah called the sons of the Rechabite. You know, people get, people get lost in time. They get defeated by time. Kings were defeated. Kings who started well, who began to rule well. Amen. Churches who began well. Pastors who began well. Apostles, prophets who began well. Amen. Were caught and judged in time because they were not tracking. That's why David said in, in Psalm 145, daily, daily, I will honor you. I will praise you. It's important that we're not engaging, amen, with a frivolous attitude. That we, we, we're not just parroting these things. That we're no, longer, we're no longer living a life of deceit. That we're daily tracking the Lord. That daily, he said, amen, the fire on the altar must not go off. Daily, you must climb, amen, the hills and go get wood, amen, for the burnt offering. That daily, amen, there must be fire on the altar. The smoke must be rising daily. Your life must reflect the smoke of God, amen. People must be able to look at you, amen, and catch faith. They must look at you and find the voice of God. They must, they must hear you, okay? They must feel the presence of God wherever you come around. Teach them to remember. It says, give this word, amen, to your, to your children. And they must pass it to their children's children. We're tracking something, friends. Sons of the Rechabite, they say, come, drink wine. Jeremiah said, come, guys, drink wine. They said, no. Even though our father who made this promise, the promise of the Nazarene are dead. But we are of their tribe. We are of the tribe of the Rechabites. We don't drink wine. Jeremiah said no. Nobody knows. It's been long. It's been years that this you know, covenant has been made. You are, you are a new generation. You are uh, the millennia. You have no sense, amen, of, of, of covenants, amen. The covenant that your father made with God is over. It's a new day. This is, this is the world of AI. It's a, it's a world, amen, where you do your own thing, amen. The oracle has, has changed, amen. <laughs> they said, no, 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 no. Sons of the Rechabiah, that is the inheritance of my own children. Raise them as sons of the Rechabites. 
that the covenant, amen, that amen, our father made, the covenant, amen, that Enoch made with God is flowing in our blood. That the covenant that earlier Noah made with God, the covenant earlier that Abraham, that God made with Abraham and the rest of the patriarchs, amen, the covenant that Esther, Ruth, Mary, Elizabeth made with God, the covenant, amen, then all the great men, the John G. Lakes and the, you know, and the, God knows those who have journeyed, those covenant, hallelujah, is flowing in our own stream. We are carriers of the covenant. One generation to another, we proclaim and declare. How can the next generation proclaim and declare if we're not laying, amen, the foundation for them, if we're not setting the path for them, if we're living this wayward life and doing things the way we want to do it, amen, living a life as if we have no, amen, eternal values in the things of God. The problem of our generation is, was caused by the last. So the last must prepare the ground for the next. So we have to understand where we are, what we are. This thing must be passed. It, it must not be polluted. As we continue to pass from one generation to another, the speakings of God, the demand of God, the intentions of God, there must not be one found among them, amen, who, who has been compromised? Like we spoke of Achan yesterday. In the journey, in the transition, he, he became, hallelujah, caught. He was corrupt. He was compromised. Amen. By what is called the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and what is called the deceitfulness of riches. He said, when I saw the Babylonish garment, when I saw it, be careful, my friends, what you see. Because what you see will create a, a sense of co co, you know, covetousness in you. That's why your eyes must constantly be sanctified by focusing on eternal things. When eternity is in view, earthly things, Babylonish garment, amen, the things of this world, amen, will not charm your heart. He said, he said on that day, let those who have live as if they do not have. Let those who are even married live as if they are single. Hallelujah. There's a point you get to that your heart begins to detach from things. Amen. Not like you, you don't like those things. No, but your heart. Because see, the Lord said to me yesterday, when you get to a point where you have come into the fulfillment or you begin to achieve, amen, the, 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 the reality of a vision that is given to you. When you begin to see that thing, and I was speaking, you know, the Lord was speaking to me, and I was having, you know, uh, somebody in mind, a lady, sister, one of our sister in mind, and the Lord said to me, you know, I, I, as you get to the point where you've come to begin to see fruits of the things you've been seeking for, you've been praying for, you've been longing for, you've been desiring, as those things begin to come into the fold, you begin to see the fruits of your handwork, the Lord said to me, that is the time you begin to detach yourself. And I was, I was still thinking about that. The Lord brought the concept of the eagle, the mother eagle. Or understand? Uh, he said, when the, when the mother eagle sees that the time has come amen, for, the, you know, for the baby eagles to start flying, it, 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 she begins to make their nest un, you know, uncomfortable for them. She begins to tear the nest. She begins, she's preparing them. You know, she's responsible, but she's saying from this point on, there's a need for detachment. We are too attached to many things. The problem of the past, the problem, amen, of the past is that the things that the church built and achieved, or call it in the world of business or wherever, we got so attached to those things that those things now took the place of God in our life. We now began to look at those things and see what my hand have done. See, see. <laughs> you know, it's like the story of the rich fool. They said today, amen, your soul will be required of you. And we will see what will become of these things. Why we'll engage. Why we'll seek to build. Why we'll seek to restore. Why we'll seek to you know, transform and, and bring hope, life, faith, grace, amen, prosperity, healing, deliverance to creation. We must understand that as we see those things begin to happen, amen, we need to detach ourselves and begin to once again focus on another dimension in the Father or else we will, we will be buried in our achievement. Hambregea. 
Thank you, Father, for reminding me of that. It is the secret of sojourners. We have not a continuous city. But we are seeking the one to come, to come. There is always another one to come in the Lord. When you think you have gotten to a point and you've done this, you've done that, you've built this, you've established that, you've created this, amen, and you see people now, amen, have come into rest. You've got to understand that is the time to detach. What did I say? You detach yourself from those things. You know, a lot of people that I have raised up, <laughs> some of you meet some of these people that we've raised up, you'll be surprised that it cannot be this small, this small, this small man. You know what? After we brought them to rest, I detach myself. I detach myself. And some of them did not understand. In fact, till tomorrow, some of them are still like, angry with me because they don't understand no you have to not like I, I don't want to attach myself I don't want to reference them you know we like to reference success no I love to reference the things that are not the things that I've not come into that's the journey that's my own identity as a prophet traveling with the Lord my reference is the things that I've not seen the things that you have seen is no longer hope you can't hope on the things that you have come into. <laughs> Faith is calling the things that be not. Not the things that have appeared. The things that are not. The Lord just gave you a secret this morning. If you're tracking. When you come into success in anything. Begin to detach yourself. You know what I mean? I'm not saying, you know, uh, you know abdicate your responsibility and all of that. And if the time comes for you to abdicate your responsibility and give somebody else, you see, that's why when you, when you raise, when you build something for God, you must create a successor. You must raise a successor. Don't die, don't die there. Don't bury your life there. You must create. And sometimes they will disappoint you. Guess what? Even if that thing fails, it doesn't mean that you have failed in the sight of God because you have put the principles of God to work. You've got to move on. The things that we create, the school that, and the training and, you know, and the, you know, you know, fashion school, training school that we created before I came to South Africa is no, is no more. The people that we gave it to could not handle it. It all collapsed. But guess what? <laughs> guess what? In the eyes of God, I fulfill, I achieve because I'm not going to allow one success to hinder me from stepping into the next day of the voice of God for my life. Everything you do, hallelujah, will not come out perfect as you expect. But as long as you're tracking the mind of God, you're tracking the, the will of God. It's a, it's a powerful thing to know when to detach yourself. Because the moment you begin to attach yourself, it could be to somebody giving you money, giving you resources, giving you... The moment you, you attach yourself, when God says detach yourself, that person becomes God. And when that person becomes a God to you, or that thing becomes a God to you, you can be rest assured that you're in trouble. We have not a continuous city. We're seeking for the one to come. Our eyes must be on that heavenly Jerusalem. The one that is coming down. Not the one man is trying to build in Jerusalem. Amen. We must be looking, pursuing that which has not come yet. That's what keeps hope alive. That's what keeps your faith. Amen. That's what keeps you waking up every day and praying. Amen. But imagine you wake up in the morning and all you're looking at the things you've achieved. Hallelujah. That's the story of the rich fool. That's the story, amen, of what brings every king down. When the king come into a day of achievement, they think they've come into rest. You have no rest except you are living, amen, in Christ. And when you are living in Christ, they will set your heart on a journey. If you are living in Christ, amen, one of the key, one of the ways we know that you, that, amen, that you are living in Christ is that your heart is set on a journey. As you are fulfilling something, as you are achieving something, even in certain cases, that thing may not even come to a place of completion and they will tell you, leave it, move. <laughs> You say, but Lord, let me finish this thing. Let me, let me, let me. Remember the children of Israel. They said the reason why we cannot engage, we cannot go and fight for the land is because of these children that are in our children. If we go, the enemy is going to come and, and invade them and kill them. God said, you don't understand. You still don't understand. And that's still the problem that we have in our generation. 
all right we are too we are too attached to what god gives to us you know it's like children that's that's a mentality of poverty it's poverty that tells you amen when you get it you must you must hang on to it hold on to it because you don't know when the next bread is going to come just hold on to it it is a mentality of poverty that's why you know these people can come from different part of the world amen and throw us you know little things and we all just jump on it and you forget that amen they've taken your inheritance may god deliver us amen from the mindset of poverty you can never be successful real success in life if you don't know how to how to move on from things how to move away from one achievement how to move away from one day of breakthrough if you don't know how to leave behind amen the things that you've been praying for god said to abraham take your son your only son <laughs> Isaac to one of the one of the one of the mountains in Moriah. I'll show you what to do there. You sacrifice him for me. Can you can you, can you comprehend that? That is still amen. A, you know a, a, a powerful theology, a doctrine in the in the in the in the scripture. You take what you have achieved. You take it to the place of sacrifice. Then God said, now I know. You see, certain breakthroughs and blessings and giftings and prosperity, they are to test you. They will give you certain gift. They test you. The day they come and ask for it, you say, no, I'm not going to give it. It's mine. I'm going to die here. I say, okay, <laughs> die, die, die there. <laughs> die there. You see, this is salvation 101 I'm, te I'm teaching you. They must teach you these things. Your heart must not be captured by, by things. Not even miracles. Your heart must be set on a journey. When we don't set our heart on a journey. We we'll become too heavy. Too tired. They say we must cast away every sin and wait there are two things they're talking about every sin and wait sin and wait that can easily beset hinder us from climbing elijah climbed to the top of mount camel bent to the earth and put his face between his knees. This was after the defeat of the false prophets. You see, Isaiah did not sit there and 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 built a camp around that victory because he knew that God's intention is not complete yet. But that was a major breakthrough that Isaiah had. The defeat, amen, of the false prophet. The coming down of the fire, the calling down of fire. The fire came down. Everybody saw it. Isaiah had become the, the man of the day, amen. I mean, that was enough for him to start Isaiah International Ministry. Maybe I should say a prophet Isaiah amen, International Ministry. His fame, his, 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 his name will have been, you know, all over the world. But he had to climb again the second time. Remember, he climbed the first time to engage the prophets of Baal. We need to set our heart, we need to set our mind, amen, on the eternal vision of God for creation. If we do, it will be very difficult for the enemy, amen, to lure us to bite, amen, the bait of temporal success. I know wonderful men of God who were captured by what they achieved, by what they came into. I know people in, in the world of business who are making it. But they have forgotten the bigger picture. Even they have forgotten the purpose of why they cried the first time God 
bless me make me make me a person of influence financially for your kingdom they forgot it's easy that when money when when you know that you know they begin to remit your account when money start flowing to your account and you start looking amen what is coming it, it's so easy to get diverted to something else to start doing amen something else to start creating things that amen you're building around your success jerusalem shall be a city without walls that's a different dimension that we have to talk about when god is the one who defines your success your breakthrough your wealth your advancement you don't need to create artificial walls you don't need to build a man <laughs> you don't need to have you know men in men in blacks you say isn't that foolish that's not foolish that's not foolish that's god because that is one way amen that you're proclaiming to the world that there's a god who watches over me except you don't believe i told us years ago still a young man of god there's this very known church in my my, my country nigeria they we're having a conference this was even before issues of Boko Haram and all of that had happened. I was having a conference. They were using the um, the National Stadium, one of the one of the gymnasium hall of the National Stadium. So this is not somebody that you know I I have you know a kind of a like for but somebody invited me one of his pastors invited me to come to come and listen to some of the you know guests. And I, could, I will never forget, I remember that day as I was about to enter, two guys stopped me and they had to search me. They searched me from up down. And to me, that was a shocker because that's the first time in my life that I encountered such a thing. That I'm going to the house of worship and I was searched. I mean, of course, I wasn't looking like a pastor, you know, it's me. This was after the Lord that began to deal with me with, in terms of how I dress and all of that. So I wasn't dressing in a way to, to like, yes, sir, man of God, welcome. <laughs> I was just like my ordinary person, you know. And as I entered, after this guy started me, say, you can go in, sir. And tears started running down my eyes. I mean, I couldn't control the tears. I just walked out. I said, I can't, I can't stay here. I can't, I can't be here. God is not here. But you must see, the whole place was charged. So much noise, so much. I left. And the Lord said, I, I allowed you to come here for you to see what has before my church. Friends, we need to understand where we are and what the spirit of the Lord. Those of you, the few that are listening to me, I know. Let your heart bear witness with the things that we are saying. There is no excuse for the condition of the current church. And somebody might disagree with me. But if you understand the position of the glory that the church ought to carry, your heart will be set on a journey. Something in you we say we need we need to do, we need to do what we need to do i need to play my own role i can't change the church no that's not what i'm what, what i'm called to do no i'm called to be a voice amen to the lordship of the house of israel mine is just to sound the trumpet mine is amen to amplify the truth amen whoever will hear will hear amen i can't change everybody i no, no. it's not my duty to do that the holy spirit is the one that changes but god gives us amen a message to go and deliver and as we continue to do that, for those whose heart, amen, are pricked by this truth, I expect you, amen, to adjust. And that's why we keep talking about this thing. Let our heart be seared with hot iron. Because that's the condition of the church today. Deception, lies, has become our trademark. We pretend. We are false. You have to engage your heart. We do things for people to like us, even if we know that <laughs> we're compromising. We, we must move away, shift away. 
We must believe God, amen, to help us. I remember when the Lord started dealing with me. One of the words he gave to me back then was, pray as if no one is praying. Live your life, amen, in the standard of my word. Of course, back then, Noah was my model. Noah was the only one in his generation. He covered his, he covered his family. His faith and grace covered his family. And I said, Lord, I thank you. You've shown me this model. Jesus Christ came. He lived a pattern life for us. The model that was supposed to be there for him had been corrupt. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. These are people that have been waiting for the Messiah, yet they've been corrupt. They've been captured. The same thing with Paul. If you are going to rise up, amen, and become a reflector of the light of God, you have to learn to stand out. Stand out not because you, you're so exclusive. You're standing out because that's what the word of God says. When you, when you live life via the standard of the word of God, you will stand out. And guess what? God does want us to stand out because he himself amen, measures the standard. He said to his angel, go measure the temple. Measure. So Elijah climbed to the top, to the top of Mount Carmel. He bent, he bent, he bent down to the earth and put his face between his knees. So that, why are they showing us, why are they describing the condition, the posture of Elijah? That's important. If, 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 that, has no, if that has no meaning, they won't put it there. Go look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked and he said, he came back and said, there's nothing, he said. Seven times Elijah said, Amen, to him to go. He came back, he said, A cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, Go, tell Ahab, hench up your chariots and go down because it's about to rain. We would need to confront. As we walk in obedience to the voice of God, we need to confront the high places. And we need to journey again back up to the hill of the Lord. Amen. In prayer, as we petition heaven for the release of rain. This morning, I want to quickly round up with where we need to step into in terms of carrying out our assignment i'm going to quickly go yesterday we read hebrews chapter 7 now i'm, I'm going to read hebrews chapter 8. it says now the main point of what we are saying is this we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. Powerful. And who serves in the sanctuary. The true tabernacle. Set up by the Lord. Not, listen to this. Set up by the Lord. Not by a mere human being. There's a tabernacle that has been set up by the Lord. There is a tabernacle, amen, that has been set up by the Lord and that Christ himself is the chief high priest in that tabernacle. Very important. Because now we have to compare the tabernacle that is set up by the Lord, amen, and the tabernacle set up by, by, human, by human wisdom, by, the, by human strength, by human hand. As they continue to engage us to move away, to shift away from that, I think that must become even more clearer. That when you when you begin to exit what men call Christianity, what men call Christianity that is basically an extension, amen, of human tradition, of human wisdom, amen, of, of human intellect, all kinds of things that we have mixed today and we call it Christianity. As we identify those things because we now have clarity via the mirror of God's word to see what God, amen, has called us to be part of. It, it becomes easy for us, amen, to see what is wrong. We see what is wrong and we're highlighting it, but we're not remaining there. We're moving on, amen, 
the Bible says this is the this is the this is the story. This is the the submission of what we are talking about. <laughs> this is what Paul is saying. We do have, amen, such a high priest. The battle of the last day, amen, are battles of the high places. And we said, amen, that in engaging this day, the, the days that we have been invited into, we have to see to it, amen, that there is a restoration of the true altar of God. That altar is the state and condition of our life, amen, in pulsating, in offering unto God, amen. When we have clarity into that, then we have a position of authority. Remember that authority begins from the position, amen, of the restoration of the priest and the altar. That's what we saw in scripture. We've tracked that. We don't have authority to engage, to stand, to challenge the forces of darkness, the powers that be, amen. If the, if the altar remains destroyed, amen, the reason why Jezebel, amen, neutralized the, 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 the worship of God, the altar and the things of God is because he had captured the priest. He captured the prophets. So as we begin to understand what the spirit of God will have us represent in terms of our own identity as amen, his, his, his voice in the earth. As we look into the word of God and find what amen, has been defined amen, to be our nature. And we begin to wear that cloak. We begin to wear that identity Amen. Like like something, our our hair in us start growing back. We begin to get our position, amen, of authority and life back, amen. That we want to bring down that false altar, that false temple that has been erected, amen. But to do that, we have to also understand that we are connected to a priesthood that is not of this world. Verse 3 of that scripture says, Every high priest is appointed to offer both gift and sacrifice. And so it was necessary for the one, for, the, for this one also, amen, to have something to offer. The Bible says, if, if he were on earth, he will not be a what? He will not be a priest. For there are, what? For there are already priests who offer gifts, amen, prescribed by the law of the earth. If this altar that we're talking about, amen, if this priest, amen, is a priesthood of the earth, he would not have been chosen to be a priest. Why? Because there is already a, a priesthood that is established, amen, on earth based on the law that governs the earth. Verse 5 says, they serve at the sanctuary that, that is a copy. The priesthood of the earth, they serve, amen, at the sanctuary that is a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven. Now, I told us when we began this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 review uh, a few days ago, that what God did was to take us out of the shadow and to present us, amen, into the substance, into the reality. Christ is the substance, amen. Our, 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 our reflection, our expression, our identity, our concept of representation, amen, is Christ. It's Christ. He is the altar. He is the priest. He is the high priest. He is the tabernacle. Hallelujah. These people, amen, who were on earth, we're, we're serving, amen, as a reflection of what is a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when, amen, he was about to build the tabernacle, see to it that you make everything, that you make everything because it was supposed to be a copy of the heavenly, heavenly life, heavenly tabernacle, heavenly priesthood. See to, see to it, amen, that you make everything according to the pattern, a pattern, amen, according to the template shown you, amen, on the mountain. But in fact, listen to this, but in, but, but in fact, the ministry Jesus received is a superior to, to you know, to, you know to, to theirs as the covenant which, amen, he is the mediator, is superior to the old one. Since the new covenant is established, amen, on a better promise. Verse, verse, uh, verse 7. For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for, for another. But God found fault. 
Now listen to this. God did not find fault with the with the with the with the things they built with the with the altar. God found fault with the people. God found fault with the people. You see, <laughs> what we build is an extension of who we are. Just like the scripture says that, you know, every house is built by a man, but God is the builder of all things. But God found fault with the people and said, this day, the days are coming, declare the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. That is the heartbeat of God. I will make a covenant with the people. You see, it's the place of covenant that our relationship and our expressions of the things of God ought to flow from. If we, if we leave the covenant that is made and we begin to follow the ceremony, amen, that, you know, that, 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 that shapes or that guides that covenant, then we have missed, we've missed the essence of the covenant. I hope somebody is listening and following what I'm trying to say. That we don't leave the covenant and start following the peripheries that ought to define to us what the covenant is. The days are coming, declares the Lord, that I will make a covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. All right? It will, not be, it will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors. So there's a change in this covenant. Remember, we began to talk about that heavenly tabernacle, that heavenly priesthood, amen, whom Christ himself is the chief high priest. So God said, I'm going to restore that covenant, amen. I'm going to restore that order. I'm moving away from the shadow, from you know, that which looks like, sound like, but is not reflecting the real thing. All right? I will make, amen, I will, he says, I will make a new covenant with them. It will not be like the one I made with their ancestors. When I took them out of, uh, you know, when I took them by hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not, amen, remain faithful to my covenant, I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind. It didn't say in their spirit. I will put my laws in their mind. This is very important. I will put my laws in their mind. In their mind. The Lord, the laws, amen, are not just some written codes amen, that we must adhere to. Of course, the people of Israel failed in that. All the laws that were given to them, they failed because they, that law could not change their nature. And that's why, amen, the things that they did, amen, in terms of the sacrifice on the altar were a regulation that they have to, you know, renew yearly and weekly and daily and monthly. Because that law, amen, that heaven wanted to establish could not get into their mind. You know that? It didn't say their spirit. It, uh, it didn't say their spirit. It said their mind, their mind. Excuse me. Where is the battle? Of true worship coming from the mind. You see, when your mind is renewed and aligned to, to with, with God, it's easy for the spirit, amen, to flow, to function. The battle, the problem is not your spirit. The problem, the problem has always been the state. Because when man fell, man did not fell into his spirit. He fell into himself. He fell into his mind. He fell into his suke. He fell into his idea. He fell into what he thought, what he imagined. Remember, it was the concept in the garden. Amen. When she saw the thing, he said, this is something, to, this is a fruit to make one wise. That was a projection of a, of a, of a captured mind. The law God, the law that the Father is making with us is a law that must be placed in the mind. That's why I said I will give them a new mind. On that day, they will not need someone to teach them because I will be their teacher. What, what is he doing? When the Lord is teaching us, he's, he's teaching us about how to turn from the things that we have believed and accepted within our mind. The mind is the seat of your suke, of your psyche, amen. Of your of your of your belief. The mind is what shapes, amen, how we define life, culture, 
Yes, because the mind, amen, is, 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 is the point where we define emotions, where we define feeling, where we define, you know, pain, where we define joy, where we define all of these things that we have come to love and accept. It's, it's, it's in the state of mind, amen, that when we do something and we feel that thing succeed and we have this sense of joy, it's from the state of mind, amen, that we derive the issues of pain, amen, and sorrow and all of the things that causes us to want to kill ourselves or want to, you know, uh, uh, you know, be like somebody else you know all the struggles that we're struggling what defines humanity is the state of their mind and god says if you want me amen to really change you you have to allow my laws into your mind i want to i want to i want to invade your mind when your mind is invaded with the word of life with the word of truth you're transformed and your transformation will abide you know, when the word of the Lord says, amen, that he who is born of God cannot sin. He said, because they are born of the incorruptible seed. What is God saying? I mean, that's a, that's a scripture that I used to think about back in those days. And I used to wonder, but Lord, I'm sinning, but I'm, I'm born again. How come I'm still sinning? I did not understand that, amen, that, that, that my, my mind, my, my soul, amen, had not come into acknowledgement, has not accepted. You see, it's easy for the mind to say, yes, I believe. But if something else that comes and proves to the mind that what you believe is not the truth, the mind changes, the mind will change his mind. That's, the, that's how the human nature, the fallen human nature works. That's why we can give a promise today and tomorrow we change it. All right? Because we are not, we are, we are, our, what we believe is not consistent to, amen, the character nature of God's word. What we believe, what we say are based on emotion, are based on how we feel, are based on how, how we think. You know, some, some, some days we wake up when we, we feel nice, we feel okay, we feel, yes, you know, feel motivated. You know, I want to, I want to win the world, I want to change the world. And then the next day you wake up and you're feeling like, you know, you don't know where you're coming from. You don't know what's happening to you. You, you know, we are like a yo-yo. We are up and down. That is because of the state of our mind. But a mind, amen. That's why the scripture says, be renewed in what? In the spirit of your mind. Let this mind be in you. When the mind of Christ comes into your life, amen, you become dependable. You become accountable. You become faithful. You become loyal. You, you become one, amen, that uh, uh, people can, 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 can rest your words, hallelujah, as good as your promise. You're not trying to prove anything because you've come to truth. When truth is established in the mind, the life of the spirit flows out. You know, when your when your your mind is not is not safe, your your faculty is not safe. You can be doing things that look spiritual. You see, spirituality is not complete until the mind. Submit under, amen, the influence and authority of God's word and of God's, of God's spirit. Spirituality is not complete. So, I can give you all of these things and say all of these things, amen. But if my mind is not in agreement, that's why I keep telling you. When I preach this thing, I sit under the authority of this word myself. And let the word of God, amen. Because, see, you can be, you can be deceived and think, well, I preached it, so I don't need to hear it. The mind is very, very complex in terms of how it deceives. The mind is very, very complex in terms of deception, in terms of, you know, you know, seduction. The mind will open you up to something that will seduce you and you will still be hallelujah, praise God. Meanwhile, you're, you've been derailed until you understand the power and the influence and the authority of the mind. You will not appreciate why you need to and strung your mind and force it under the authority of Christ. You will not understand. Your most vulnerable period in life is where you just have success. Because at that time, 1,001 things is coming through your mind that is telling you, this is what you must do. And most times, it's not a man, something that brings glory to God. What causes, you know, King Error to be destroyed? Because he did not give the glory to God. 
The people held him. This is the voice of a God and not the voice of a man. I mean, that is a story that we hardly talk about. The Bible says warmth came up, came, came out and ate him up. Lord help us. God is very, very concerned about how we direct our mind, where we put the energy of, of our life. I will put my laws. What is the laws of God? The law, let's, let, let me explain this. What, what are the laws of God? The laws of God are the principle, are the principle, the values that allow us to live in the eternal intention of God before the fall. The laws of God are the principle that allow us to live life. Amen. They are the divine standard. Amen. Of how God will have us express life before the fall. That law is the law of life. That flows from Jesus Christ our Lord. When Christ is allowed to sit completely, to govern, to rule. You see, that takes, that's where the work is. Remember, we read yesterday and this morning, it says thrive to enter into the rest. To enter into the rest of God is to begin to take the word of God and embellish it over every faculty, over every area of your life. You let the word of God, the word that is relevant to the state of your mind, you let that word, amen, rule there. The word that is relevant to the state of your manhood, you let that word rule there. The word that is relevant to the state of your to state to the state of your womanhood, you let the word rule there. You don't second guess and you don't begin to use worldly wisdom, amen, to, to judge what God says. When you are using the world standard, amen, the ideas of the world, the things you are borrowed a man from the fallen nature to begin to challenge God's word sorry Christ cannot reign in you and neither can you re, you know be a reflection of his reign powerful word you see that is where the battle is that's where the work is you bring yourself under the authority under the influence and that means you're going to be doing things that is going to be causing your flesh to be crying, to be, no, no, don't do that. You do it. The more you do that, the more you, you bring yourself under the influence, under the authority of Christ. That is the place where power begins to flow from. That is the place where you are able to begin to represent the things of God. It's not the number of scriptures you know. It is how much the scripture, amen, have changed the various part of your life. When there's a word that deals with hatred, that deals with pride, you let down the word, engage that aspect of your life. If there's a word, amen, that deals with your, your stinginess, your inability to give, even when you know you're supposed to. You let that word rule in that area. Regardless of what anybody thinks. You deliberately do things. You deliberately give to prove to your flesh amen, that he can detect. You do things that, that makes you humble yourself. You see, humility is not something that comes via the laying on of hands. You do it. You go out of your way. You carry out things that humble you. I learned that from Mother Teresa. So you can learn things from some of these people. They ask Mother Teresa, what how, how do you get so humble how i mean you you help these people you're there you how mother Teresa said the secret is i do things that humble me i do the things that humble me that makes me humble you see humility is is, is a is, is an active word you have to do something bible says, and jesus stoop low he got himself and he stooped low and began to wash the feet. See, as long as you stand and you're looking down at somebody and you're teaching them humility. Sorry, 
They will never get it. Because you yourself, you are not humble. Humility begins when you practice it. You practice it. You, 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 you allow, amen, your life to become the, the gospel. That's why we say the gospel is not just about what we preach. It's a life we live. It's a lifestyle. You, you, you find that in my latest material. Defining, amen, the gospel of the kingdom. It's not, it's not a message. What we preach, amen, ought to be a life that we live. That we reflect. If you come to my house, my house will tell you is a man of God because I, I live the life. I live it to my children. I live it. I, I express it. I let it show. Why? Because you have to do that. It's not the easiest thing to do. Sometimes, amen, it, it's, it's, there's a resistance. There's a fight. But you have to. It is in the doing that we get blessed. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their heart. If this has not happened to you, then you have to engage God. I will be their God. The promise after putting his law in our minds and writing it in our heart is that he will be our God. And they will be my people. Now listen to this. No longer will, no longer will they teach their neighbors Amen. Or saying to one another, know the Lord. Yeah. You know, know, know the Lord. Hey, you've got to know the Lord. You've got to know the Lord. You've got to know the Lord. You know how we preach. You've got to know the Lord. No longer will they teach or preach, amen, to their neighbor. Hey, in other words, their life will become the message. This is the church of the last day. This is the third dimension of a church heaven is calling us into. And to do all of this, we have to engage the things that we've been talking about. We have to pull down the high places. The, 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 the position of, of, of Heab, the condition of Jezebel in our mind, we have to pull them down. Casting down strongholds, imaginations, and every high thing amen, that have exalted themselves, we have to bring them down. When you do that, then you come to amen, the point in Hebrews where the scripture says, amen. in fact, maybe I should come well, let me not go there because of time. He said, for you have not come to a mountain that can be touched. You've moved away from Mount Sinai. Now you're coming to Zion. Zion is a spiritual location and position where, amen, the kingdom people are birthed. These ones are born in Zion. It's from that point, amen, where we begin to interact. Hallelujah. With the dimension, amen, of the heavenly life. Remember, that's how, that's where we started from. You begin to operate, amen, from that position of a life, from the top of the mountain, from the holies of holy. You begin to engage, amen, dimensions in the human realm and you prefer solution. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The book of Hebrews is a very powerful book to read when you're dealing with issues like this. In verse 1 of Hebrews 12, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded with such great a cloud of witnesses, it's talking about that heavenly order again, let us throw off every, every, everything that hinders, everything that hinders, and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing, amen, fixing our eyes, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Jesus is not in the valley. Jesus, amen, he's seated at the right hand of the, fa uh, of the Father, amen. From that position, amen, he's making his enemy his full stool. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer. I like the word that says the author and the perfecter the mature the one who matures amen our faith the pioneer and the perfecter of faith for the joy that was set before me he endured the cross now showing us the pattern of how he got to that point for the joy that was before him amen he endured the shame he scorned the shame amen and sat at the right hand amen of the throne he sat at the right hand 
That's the position of a man. A finished work is sad. Consider him who endures such opposition from sinners. You've got to understand this. This is the life we live in. You've got to consider Christ, amen, is our model. Is, is our divine pattern. Consider him, amen. Consider him. Who endure. Endurance is what the church need. The church of the last, they need endurance because we're going to be suffering all kinds of oppositions and persecution, amen, from sinners. Who are sinners? Those who hate God. Sinners are those who hate God, who hate the ways of God, who hate the intentions of God, who hate the plans of God. And guess what? Sinners are not just people in the world. We have some of them, most of them in the church. Some of them are our brothers. Anyone who hates the ways of God, the values of God, who hates truth is a sinner. Because the opposite of sin is righteousness. Amen. To live in sin is to hate the nature of God. Is to hate the will of God. Is to hate the intentions of God. Is to hate, amen, the values of God. Amen. Consider him who endures such opposition from sinners. So that you will not, what, grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. That's the standard Christ left for us. So he said, if you have not gotten to this point, continue. So you consider him, amen. In your struggle, amen, consider him. For you have not resisted unto blood. And have, and, and have you completely forgotten the words of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? My son, amen. Do not make light of the lost discipline. Do not lose your heart, amen. When he rebukes you, because the Lord discipline, chastise, correct, amen. Rebuke the one he loves. He chastise everyone, amen. He chastise anyone he accepts as his son. Now verse 7 says, endure hardship as, 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 as discipline. Endure hardship as discipline. God is, God, God is treating you, amen, as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are, if you are not disciplined, if you are not disciplined, everyone undergoes discipline. Then you are not, amen, if you, if you re refuse discipline, it says then you are not, you know, you are not legitimate. You're not a true son or true son or daughter at all. Moreover, we all, amen, have human fathers who discipline us and, res and, and we respect them for it. How much more should we submit to the fathers of the spirits and leave? Discipline, amen, is very important for us. And then, of course, he went further and began to tell us, amen, how we need to move to a, a dimension. When we go through all of these things that Christ laid for us, then we come to verse you know, 18 that says, You have not come to a mountain that can be what touched and that is burning with fire, amen, to darkness, to gloom, to storm, amen, to trumpet blast and to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it beg no further word to be spoken to them. Because they could not bear what was what commanded. Why, they, why, why, why is it that they could not bear? Because their mind, amen, has not, been, has not been purified. They've not allowed the word of God to sit in their heart, to sit in their mind. They've not allowed Christ, amen, to come and take reign over their heart, over their mind. This is very important. The Bible says they could not, they could not endure the command. He said, but you, verse 22, he said, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, amen, to the heavenly Jerusalem. So they make it clear there. So you don't think it's, you know, the physical Jerusalem. Yeah. To the heavenly Jerusalem, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful gathering. That's where we're coming, friends. That word angel is not just speaking about, amen, the angels who stand before the Lord. is also speaking about the gathering, amen, of the ecclesia, the saints of God. We are the angels. We are the messengers, hallelujah, of God to our generation. You have come, amen, to thousands upon thousands, amen, of angels in joyful. Angels, messengers, prophetic men and women are coming together, hallelujah, to celebrate the day of the firstborn church. Whose name are written in heaven. You have come to God. Amen. To the judge of all. The judge of all. Amen. To the spirit of the righteous made 
perfect. You have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Amen. And the sprinkling of eternal blood that speaks better things than the blood, amen, of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape, they will not escape. Lord, we thank you. Your word is life to us. It is from this dimension then, then he went further in verse 28. Then he began to speak that we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let us be thankful. Amen. And so worship God acceptably in reverence and in awe. For our God is a consuming fire. We honor you, Father. As we round up this time of review so many things you've said to us and still so many things we have not said but I pray oh God that as we continue yes in chapter in verse 28 this is where we are right now we're receiving a kingdom we've been talking about how to step into this kingdom and we've been looking at the concept of the apostolic church, the, the spirit of the apostolic church laid on the foundation, amen, of receiving a kingdom and engaging the reality of what is called this third day dimension of the expressions of God. That we will continue to build. We have there about another nine years as you've spoken to us as we began. And I thank God that we are not the only one hearing these things. There are several people you've spoken to just like when you spoke to us about the reset there were other people who said they also heard that this is a reset thank you lord that your word always bring confirmation one should prophesy two should judge we thank you spirit of god thank you father for everyone that has joined this morning to listen to have a listen spending their time even as they get ready to to go to work to maybe some of them are already on their way to work but i thank you father for this word this word it's a word of life, it's a word of hope, it's a word of faith, a word of courage, a word of renewal, a word of re-engagement, a word of correction, a word of rebuke. We thank you, Lord, that your word will adjust us, that will allow this word to speak to us throughout the day as we deal with the issues of life, as we deal with the issues of buying and selling, as we deal with the issues of service, as we deal with the issues, oh God, yes, of trying to bring, yes, hope, joy, peace, tranquility, yes, grace, provision, sustenance to life, to society. May we rise up, oh God, not forgetting like Daniel, engaging, oh God, yes, Jerusalem, as our window is open. May we pray. May we know that our strength comes from you. May we know that favor comes from you. May we know that, yes, grace comes from you. The ability to be our best, to give ourselves without compromising comes from you. So we surrender, we submit, we yield, oh God, to your instruction. We thank you, Lord, Lord, that this day we will prosper. We will prosper in our action, in our character, in our attitude. Help us to imbibe this truth. Write your law upon, yes, our heart. Father, we pray. Write, inscribe your laws. Write your law upon our hearts. May this word find root within our minds. May we be changed, transformed. When our minds and our hearts are transformed, we become new. Your spirit can flow easily unsolicited your power and grace can flow through our life we thank you this morning oh god we proclaim and we declare that lord as we proceed further as we move on grace 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 oh god to your people we declare grace to the people of god i thank you spirit of god i thank you lord for everyone that will be listening to this broadcast may this truth oh god find them oh god in the place of divine adjustment i thank you I honor you. I glorify you. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, see of the Lord. Perfect your will in my life. Perfect your will in this ministry. Lord, grant us grace to do the things that we desire to do. Help us, O oh God, to build, O oh God. Help us to finish 
that you that which your spirit has laid in our heart we receive provision from the north from the south from the east from the west we thank you for openings of doors touch hearts of the hearts of men to reach out to us as we seek to build a studio god where we can have better oh god yes platform and equipment to do what we need to do thank you spirit of god that we shall not be hindered i thank you father for hearts and mind right now oh god that you're touching lives oh god that you're ministering to as we continue to release resources oh god for your church to your church oh god to have enough in journey further may we also be ministered to i thank you not by might not by power but by your spirit my eyes are on you not on man but i know you will use men and will be forever eternally grateful for everyone that you use and those that you have used and that you're still using we pray openings grace favor blessings may they have oh god yes father inroad access into father your storehouse may your peace continue to rest upon them as they hear listen to this truth of oh god may it bring them oh god into that place into that point oh god where indeed clarity direction creativity wisdom productivity is established in their life i thank you i bless you oh god we honor your name we pray for other ministries out there grace 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 strength favor in the name of jesus to all ministries that are standing for truth standing for yes your voice your intention in this last day we pray provision for them blessings honor oh god yes lord in this ministry we thank you for raising yes people men and women who will support will support thank you you know where the treasures are. You know where the blessings are. Thank you, Father, for the release of your spirit. Thank you for your kingdom that is prospering in their lives, in their home, family. Their challenge at home, domestically. We pray, Father, that you will minister peace to their home, to their family. In the name of Jesus, men of God, yes, could be very secretive in terms of their challenge. But we thank you, Lord, that you will open your, 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 your windows of heaven. And you reach out to these men and women. Bless them. Favor them, O oh God, today. We bless you, Father. Thank you for peace. Thank you for rest, Sabbath, upon the life of your children. We thank you for the saints. Thank you, Father, that they are coming out, O oh God. Those that are tired and, and disappointed by what has been done in the past. Thank you, Lord, that they are finding newness. They are finding direction. They are finding your voice again. They are finding perspective, hope. Faith is rising in them again. We honor you that once again the corporate church will rise up and we will be, yes, a covering to each other, a blessing to each other. We thank you for newness. Thank you, Lord, that we renew our covenant with you. And we say, Father, we are not giving up. We bless you, God, for the journey ahead. May we continue to travel light. May we continue to travel light. Our soul, mind, and body is bound to your will. We proclaim this morning that we are healed. We are restored. We are transformed. We are renewed, reformed, revived to the glory of your name. We bless you, O God. We thank you that the heavens are open. Thank you for the reign of your spirit, O God, upon the church, upon the life of the saints. I pray for every believer across the globe. Yes, Father. Among the seven billions of people living on earth lord uh, wherever we find a house of hope a house of light a personal god who have proclaimed and declared christ as their lord i pray you minister to them send hope to them send faith to them send your grace your love let it overwhelm their heart this morning let them feel anew again yes we pray for your church your body across the earth grace grace upon them we pray that they will not be afraid they will not fail they will not be frightened by the lies of the enemy thank you spirit of god for what you have done this morning we strengthen them we we pray for them we proclaim and we declare and those who are been lied to and when the enemy is still lying to them we pray lord that they will wake up to truth they will wake up to righteousness they will repent, O oh God, of their wickedness. And they will turn to you. Say, turn to me and be saved. We thank you this morning for transformation, reformation, re redemption, deliverance, O oh God, from the lies of the enemy. We come against demonic activity. 
within yes the body of christ within community we come against every satanic demonic activity we break the hold of principality we come against the spirit of wickedness in high places upon realms upon cities upon nation we declare the nation belongs to christ we decree and we proclaim redemption for the city redemption for regions redemption oh god for africa redemption for europe for asia yes redemption for the pacific for the islands redemption oh god father for the fire with redemption oh god yes father in the name of jesus for asia redemption redemption for the arab worlds redemption redemption oh god we proclaim redemption hallelujah redemption we declare it oh god redemption this day oh god we thank you for what you're doing in america we thank you for what your spirit has begun to do in europe change is taking place deliverance is taking place yes you're breaking the heart of stone you're removing the heart of stone and you're giving the people the heart of flesh we proclaim it it is done to the glory of god thank you spirit of god this morning for hope that is coming christ you are the hope of the nation thank you for a church that is rising up a church that is born after the order yes of the heavenly tabernacle we thank you we represent you christ you are our our chief high priest and you're seated ministry thank you lord this day that we are seated with you in 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 peace and in righteousness we proclaim and we declare your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven we pray oh god this day give us father this day our daily bread thank you spirit of god that you have become our righteousness we will not be afraid thank you lord this morning that we are clothed yes in the garment of humility in the garment oh god of sanctification we are sanctified your word has purified us this morning your word has healed us we thank you for a company of elijah rising up oh god yes father to the top of mount Carmel. we thank you for the spirit of intercession the spirit of prayer thank Thank you, God. We will not be prayerless. We will rise and we will pray. Thank you, Spirit of God, for the grace to call upon your name, to declare, to decree, to execute the judgment that is written. Hallowed be your name. We say your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the ministry of your word, the ministry of your word, the ministry of a, of, 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 of a teacher of the word. Yes, the ministry of scribe. Thank you, O God, for giving us platform. Thank you, Lord, that word, your word, O God, will penetrate every area of life. Your word, your truth, your standard, O God, your intention, your desire will continue to speak. Your word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edges. So, piercing to the dividing asunder. Yes, Lord, of the, of the marrows and the bones yeah thank you spirit of god that your word is bringing deliverance right now to rams to cities to churches to people to communities to family to men and women our identity is being restored in the name of jesus thank you father for a priesthood of god that is being that is being released out there right now representing your divine intention in the name of jesus we will not be compromised you're coming for a glorious church without spot without wrinkle and without blemish we declare that it is our inheritance hallelujah glory to god Glory to God in the highest. Legaba standevi, rigaba standeba. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for what your spirit is doing in Russia. We thank you for what you're doing in that region. Your glory, your life, your power, your spirit, your dominion. Yes, Lord, reigns there. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for what you're doing in China. Your will, your counsel, your intention, your desire, oh God, yes, is manifest. There is no one can stand. There is no one that can stand your authority, your wisdom, your sovereignty. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Yes, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in this land, in this nation. Lord, that we have adopted, we've been praying and interceding for. Thank you, Lord, that South Africa will be saved. South Africa will be delivered from the spirit of the charlatan men and women 
This nation will be delivered from corruption, from wickedness, from perversion, from destructive spirit. This nation will be free and be delivered, oh God, from murder, from the spirit of murder, from the spirit, yes, of, of crime in the name of Jesus. We proclaim, yes, your seal upon this land, upon this nation. We decree it, we declare it, oh God. Truth will prevail. Righteousness will prevail, oh God. The lies of the enemy will be frustrated. The council of Ayutofe over this land is frustrated. Christ, you are crowned king. You reign in majesty. You reign in dominion over this land, over this nation. We thank you for the church of South Africa is rising up. We remember, yes, the Chief Justice McQueen McQueen this morning. We pray for him as this man stands to declare, yes, uh, your voice, your will, your counsel. We stand as the body of Christ, oh God, globally, and we lift him up. We pray for him, Lord, that he will not be defeated. He will not be brought down. When he's challenged, the entire church is challenged. We thank you, Spirit of God, that we stand by him this morning and we declare your peace, your glory, your grace upon his household, upon his family, upon, yes, his calling, his position. He will continue to speak forth your will and counsel, your righteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless your name this morning for what you have done. Thank you, Father, for your will all across, yes, the southern region, for what you're doing in Namibia. We pray for our brethren in Namibia. We lift up uh, this morning. Bishop Wells, Abraham, we lift him up, Lord. I just thank you. We pray for him. We pray for his, his ministry. We pray for his household. We pray for his family. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, strengthen him, oh God. Grace him this morning. Grace him. Grace his family. And Power him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In this trying time, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your will and counsel will continue to lift him up in Jesus' name. Let this, oh God, be a time of newness, of a new day, of a new beginning. Bring them, oh God, into a new height, oh God. Bring them into a new vision, into a new position where he can begin to see, oh God. Bring him out, oh God, of the quagmire, of the of the of the mess. Bring him out, oh God. Bring him to the hill where he can see things with clarity we thank you we bless your name oh god that he will continue to remain a voice in that region oh god we thank you that the, the work that you've assigned them is rising is increasing oh god thank you for the people they have been empowered thank you spirit of god that as the church is challenged oh god they will rise up to become that church on the hill that house on the hill that cannot be hindered thank you for your light that is shining upon them we pray for them as we pray for him oh god and the church and the ministry we pray oh god for people oh god yes lord uh, in the meantime we strengthen them. We declare, oh God, that COVID-19 will not destroy your work and your men in that nation, in that place, Father. We, so we thank you for what you're doing. As we pray, oh God, for Namibia, we pray for Zambia, we pray, oh God, for Zimbabwe in the name of Jesus. Light, grace, yes, provision. We pray, for God, for Mozambique. We pray in the name of Jesus. For Congo, we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, for Angola. We pray, Spirit of God, let your church arise in this season and time. We rise, oh God, Thank you, Father, for your economy right now that is ministering to your church. We thank you for provision. We thank you for life. We thank you for life. We thank you for grace, power, authority, dominion. Your kingdom come. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love to pray. I don't know about you, but I love to pray. I love to stand in the gap for people. Just love to be a blessing to people. Father, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you. We thank you. Glory, glory, glory. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done this morning. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much, everyone, this morning that have joined us. I want to appreciate this time that you have spent with us. I know that is a bit challenging for people to spend, you know, such a long time listening. But we know as you as you join in and, you know, leave and come, well, we thank God for what the Lord, amen, has, has continued to do. And whenever you have the time to sit down and listen, well, I, I, I pray and I hope that you'll be able to receive, amen, words that will bring, amen, clarity and direction to your life regarding the things that we have said. Well, I want to believe that we are done with this uh, uh you know, short uh, uh, sessions on reviewing to twenty, you know, twenty twenty, entering into the Sabbath of the Lord. I want to believe that, of course, we can still continue to talk about things like this, but there's a pattern that we are following, and so by the grace of God, tomorrow we we hope to go back to Amen, the concept of engaging the kingdom of God, and of course, dealing with the the realities of you know the spirit of the act of the apostle 
Oh, as the Spirit of the Lord will lead us, we just flow. Amen. So thank you once again, everyone, for being part of this uh, live broadcast. Please continue to pray for me. Continue to pray for this work, for, for this ministry. Continue to ask the Lord to strengthen me. I need all the wisdom, grace, resource to do what the Lord will have us do. Thank you so much. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.